Hi, I'm Steve Lentini, and I'm your host for the podcast, Different Thinking for Different Times. This is Season 3, Episode 41. I like to start with a quote, and here's one from Henry Van Dyke. Self is the only prison that can ever bind the soul. I love that because it points to that small-minded thinker, the self that can bind the soul, that thinks in fashion of limited thinking, small-minded thinking, judging others, making others wrong, railing against a group of people that think differently or look differently. All of those things are small-minded thinking. And of course, when we leave here, the physical existence to what's next, None of that thinking goes with us. I mean, based on my own experience on November 18th, 2002. And we'll all experience it. You'll experience it. I just hope it's not before the podcast ends. It's something we call death, but it should be called what's next. Literally, in intensive care, one second and one with everything and nothing, one with the infinite in the next second. And it's nothing like the hubris and egoic mind that humans have thinking that we're somehow general managers of the universe, that we have all the answers and that God or the infinite, whatever created this thinks like we do. Frank King said to me the other day, he's a comedian. You'll have to Google him. He's on YouTube and many other places. And he's a great keynote speaker. He said to me, Sounds like you have a lack of commitment, Steve, hearing my near-death story. (laughs) I laugh, right, did I? I said to him, well, I am committed to many things. I guess I wasn't on that day committed to dying. Here's something else I'd like to read from Henry Van Dyke. He calls it his Christmas story, Keeping Christmas. So if you'll indulge me, I'll read this. It is a good thing to observe Christmas Day the mere making of times and seasons. When people agree to stop work and make merry together is a wise and wholesome custom. It helps one to feel the supremacy of the common life over the individual life. It reminds a person to set their own little watch and now and then by the great clock of humanity, which runs on some time. But there is a better thing Henry Dave, Henry Van Dyke goes on to say, there is a better thing than the observance of Christmas Day, and that is keeping Christmas. Are you willing to forget what you have done for other people and to remember what other people have done for you? To ignore what the world owes you and to think what you owe the world? To put your rights in the background and your duties in the middle distance? and your chances to do a little more than your duty in the foreground. To see that your fellow humans are just as real as you are and try to look behind their faces to their to their hearts, hungry for joy. To own that probably the only good reason for your existence is not what you're going to get out of life, but what are you going to give to life? to close your book of complaints against the management of the universe and look around you for a place where you can sow a few seeds of happiness. Are you willing to do these things even for a day? Then you can keep Christmas. Now I'm going to pause the reading for just a second because so much of that matches my experience on the other side and what I learned from it, my own small-minded, acorn brain, limited thinker. And I was 50, I'm embarrassed to say when it occurred, but I learned how small-minded that thinking, that little thinker, sometimes I call it the little fucker that resides in my brain. And when I talk to others, they agree. They have that same little voice that's looking for what the world owed me, especially at that time. And thinking about what I was going to get to life rather than what I would give to it. And today, of course, because only the good I had done 
Only the lives I had touched flashed before me in my life review. And as most people think, not only if you make a mistake should you pay here, whether it's a jail term or living with the guilt of something, the regret, the shame, but that you should also burn in hell forever. And I can tell you that's going to disappoint a lot of people here in this existence. It won't disappoint you in what's next because that's all there is. You're leaving something behind. So you can't take your possessions with you, but you can leave behind the impact you've had on others. It stays forever. The good that you do. So let me go on to read what Henry Day, Henry Van Dyke wrote in the Christmas Keeping Christmas Story. Are you willing to stoop down and consider the needs and the desires of little children? To remember the weakness and loneliness of people who are growing old? To stop asking how much your friends love you and ask yourself whether you love them enough? To bear in mind the things that other people have to bear on their hearts, to try to understand what those who live in the same house with you really want without waiting for them to tell you, to trim your lamp so it will give more light and less smoke and to carry it in front so that your shadow will fall behind you, to make a grave for your ugly thoughts and a garden for your kindly thoughts with the gate open Are you willing to do these things even for a day? Then you can keep Christmas. Are you willing to believe that love is the strongest thing in the world, stronger than hate, stronger than evil, stronger than death, and that the blessed life which began in Bethlehem 1900 years ago is the image and brightness of the eternal love? Then you can keep Christmas. And if you can keep it for a day, why not always? But you can never keep it alone. That's wonderful work. Written by Henry Van Dyke. Look it up. Keeping Christmas. Let's go back to that last paragraph. Are you willing to stoop down and consider the needs and desires of little children to remember the weakness and loneliness of people who are growing old, to stop asking how much your friends love you and ask yourself whether you love them enough. Fascinating, right? The acorn brain has us thinking about getting for ourselves. And he's, and he says, will you, are you willing to make a grave for your ugly thoughts and a garden for your kindly thoughts, your kindly feelings. I can tell you that's all that's recorded somehow on the fabric of time. The good you do when you leave everything and everyone a little better than you find them. When you have a kindly thought, a kindly feeling, a kind regard for others. When you do something kindly for others, imagine trying to understand what those who live in the same house with you really want without waiting for them to tell you. Can you live like that with everyone, not just those that live with you? Can you put down your fingers on the keyboard that are ready to type a response to somebody on Twitter or Facebook and to make them wrong because they might have a position or a thought or want to make a point about someone they support that's differ, different from your thoughts, that differs from you, or someone that looks differently. What's the discussion like in your home? What example are you setting for your children? What are you modeling? Are you modeling anger and bickering? Are you modeling racist, obscene, or angry thoughts about others? 
or maybe it's your political leaders. You disagree with someone who has membership in one party or another. Never follow anything blindly, but even your own thoughts. Your answers questioned, as Asho wrote in his book. Can you come to that place where you begin to question your own answers? I suggest you look at it. And I suggest you think about how you feel when you do good, when you're kindly toward others, when you help others. Most people answer me. They feel good. There's a reason for that. Think about it. How do you feel when you have ugly thoughts or ugly words or railing against others? Do you really feel good? Have you accomplished anything by making others wrong, whether it's an individual, someone at work, or a whole group of people that disagree or are different from you? Would we even know we were alive if it wasn't for all the differences? A bunch of physicists, by the way, have written about a study and they believe that there's many levels of the universe and that now they believe that our energy moves on to something next. Different, albeit, than this universe, this physical world that we're in. But it's fascinating that even now people are finding more and more about it. I'm clicking on my computer. I hope you'll give me a minute so that I can find it for you. In the name of the article. But it's about even science is beginning to question whether or not we go on, our consciousness goes on. And this group of scientists says, yes. And that they, they believe it's possible that there's multiple universes. Universe on top of universe. The only reason I bring that up is because our small-minded acorn brain, our hubris, our egoic thinking, of course thinks we're it. it <clears throat> Even if we're not, they call them aliens and they're afraid they're preparing to be invaded by aliens. I don't know, aliens may be coming, in some of those UFOs. But they're probably looking around and saying, not here, folks. This is not where we want to stay. <laughs> I suspect that's probably true. So think about where are you limiting yourself with small-minded thinking? And perhaps where are you setting a poor example? And what are you teaching your children with some of the dialogue around the home? Are you teaching them that, in fact, that's the way to act, to judge others? So the article is in Science and Nature, and it's titled Quantum Theory Proves that consciousness moves to another universe after death. Now, someone sent it to me because they know it's what I talk about. And when I read the article, it was amazing. So I suggest you Google science and nature and quantum theory and up will pop the article. But you have to prove these things for yourself. Unless, of course, you have a near-death experience or a death experience. What's next experience? And as I've said earlier, and in all of my podcasts, I hope it's not before the podcast ends. Or tonight. Or tomorrow morning. But the thing is, we don't know. Why live afraid of death? 
Why not just live? It's small minded, anything that's fear. And anything that's small minded, limited acorn brain thinking is not and does not model what we come from, the infinite that created a wonderful, wondrous life for us, an opportunity here on a miracle, on a little globe, probably in relation to the size of the universe, no bigger than a marble, perhaps smaller, floating around an exposed nuclear fusion plant called the sun. We call it the sun because our small-minded thinker needs to give definition to everything. Even the term the universe gives it definition for our little brains. And we're at the exact right spot for life to occur. And we have a rock floating around us that affects our tides called the moon. Consider the miracle we live in. Consider where you can expand your thinking. And enjoy your life and let others enjoy theirs. Their journeys are none of your business. Your only business is your journey. Manage that better. Work to leave everyone and everything a little better than you find them. And do good. Let go of all the judgments about who you might give a few dollars to or buy a sandwich for. Or look around. Where can you help? There's many ways. It could be time or talent. And it could be treasure. could be your money. Do you have to prove these concepts to yourself? That challenging your own thinking will make a difference in your life. Looking at wherever you have judgments, small-minded thinking, where you're making others wrong, railing against others, angry, bitter, not forgiving. All of those are small-minded thinking and the list goes on. I challenge you to do that. Question your own answers. Look at where can you do more good. And think before you say or do anything, what good would it do? We live in a miracle. Just keep thinking about that. All right, if you want to be a guest... Email me, steve at stevelentini.com, steve at stevelentini, L-E-N-T-I-N-I dot com. Email me. I'm glad to answer any questions, comments. I'll read them all. If you'd like to be a guest, email me as well. You can come challenge me. Remember, I might ask you, does that sound like small-minded thinking? Until next time. Thanks.